This is Pine Leaf Needles, Skirmish from Middle Earth. I'm arriving at Hutbold for the first time for this character. Now, in coming in, I have a single quest at this time, is dire. and that's just to say hello. Will you aid the Rohiri? He will then give me a quest to find all the various districts and amenities within Hutbold, which are all now burnt to the ground. Now since it's been burnt to the ground, this means that there are no amenities that are usable at this time. No stables, no mailboxes, no milestone, no crafting facilities. So despite all these icons that you may see in my mini-map here, they're not being used at this time. There's the Scholar Home. The Smithy. And the object is for us to rebuild these facilities over time. And what I mean by time is about 44 days. Now, yes, you can use turbine points in order to accelerate things a little bit. Or, more likely, mithril coins. But that will be a while if you want to spend all that stuff. I'd rather just spend the 44 days. Uh, let's see. Now we'll go to the various districts. There are four districts here. One that corresponds to each of the four zones that you will find in Rohan. There's the Wold district. Yes, I know that there are six zones in Rohan, but only four of them are really inhabited. Fangorn's Edge is inhabited by ants and Hrons, but not by Rohirrim. Let me just turn that. That is one of the most annoying things about this panel is whenever I try to close this window I always hit one of these buy now buttons instead. Constantly popping up the store window when the last thing I want is to buy anything. And the last thing I need is an extra window popping up distracting me and making me get lost. I think I've found the Sucrofs district finally. No, Northcrofts. Alright. Which puts Sucrofs this way. And there we are. And now I just have to go to the farms. Which, as you would guess, are outside. Nice and open for the orcs to invade. But that's always been the problem with farms, I presume. Is that putting a farm in a good place where you could grow crops puts them in a bad place to protect them away from invaders, such as Easterlings and Orcs. And here are the farms. And I have to make these fields nice and fertile again so that we can grow all the various crops we need. And as I'm a farmer and a cook, that is obviously a priority. Despite that, I will also be bringing up the other crafting facilities, mainly because when they come up, you also earn some crafting instances. And they could be useful in getting some drops at level 85. 
What business right, have turn you this in. Rotary. Our success depends upon our strength. And I need to gather 25 Hootbold tokens. Fortunately, that is exactly what I received during the last quest, the one that did all those tours. Therefore, what business have you with the Rohirrim? It now looks nice and beautiful. Of course, the inside looks like a burnt out hulk still, but things will take time. This also opens up a new deed. First, the Mead Hall. And you will get one of these for each of the sections within Hoodfold. Whenever you open up a new area that's not within a deed already and rebuild that section, you'll get another deed unlocked. Eventually, when you finish one of these deeds, you either get an upper deed to that or you'll get one called Hoodfold. When you complete all parts of the Hoodfold deed, finally, you're done. For example, he has all of these deeds, but they all cost tokens, and the way to get tokens are to run your dailies, aiding the Eastament. The Rohirrim have need of so I'll accept services. this, and I need to go my way. Of course, traveling there is going to be another problem. Fortunately, I'm a warden, and I have mustered the Snowborn. It requires ally with the suit crofts. Not ally, acquaintance with the suit crofts. And five travel rations. But it's the quickest way to get around, especially with no stable master in Hootball Jet. Now, for the dailies here. There are. 16 quest givers, and you can get five dailies in a single day. If you go about resetting it, you could get a few extra, but then it'll be impossible really to do more than 15 in a day because once you do that, once you do 15, you've gone through two resets, assuming they let you do two resets, and you have only one quest left. And it's not worth doing a reset just for one remaining quest. Now there are three quest givers. Halak here likes to give fishing quests, and he's giving Terror of the Deep. Now, if you were watching the one being given by Spridra, that's the one that she did before. Therefore, I'm going to skip the ones that Spridra showed you and show you make a different set. And he's showing digging for iron, yes. And this one's always the same, the farms of suit crops. Will you aid us? As they are all giving the same quests that Spridra showed in her video, I will be off to one of the other four areas. Now, perhaps some people like riding through town on their mounts, but... I just run across, so I suspect a little coffee wouldn't hurt to speed things up a little bit. Will you aid the horse lord? Now I've got a choice as to where I go, which I have swift travel here to each of these areas. Let us start with the Harwick which is in the world. And the stable master speeds things up a bit with the swift travel. And there we go. Now the quest givers tend to be near the Mead Hall in the Wold and in the Sootcrofts. 
and an Intwash Vale. They're a bit of distance away from there. They're in the town, well, a bit north of the town center in the Norcroft. So that's the one that's a bit different on that. Now let's see what quests they're giving. Defense of Harwick, Reign of Arrows, and Defense of Harwick, the Assault. Now I'm not particularly fond of this Rotary one, but... Need your aid. Let's get them out of the way. I'll take both of these quests. Our success depends upon our strength. Will you aid us? And then jump into the fray. Now, one of the things I don't like is the fact that if one of the guards gets anywhere near one of these opponent, they turn gray. And now I'm stuck with this guy with aggro on him. And I won't get credit. And I have to kill ten of these in order to finish. See, I missed him just barely. One of the guards got him just before I was able to get him. Now, fortunately, I am able to get credit for the flags. Alright, here's one. And whenever I get this, the archers can hit your target thing, you just hit your green flag. And the archers shoot him. You still get credit if the archers hit him. Fortunately. Since that's part of the quest. Alright, that takes care of all the rain of arrows I have to do. Just four of them. And now I've got to actually kill these guys. Away from the guard so they don't turn gray on me. Alright, that's two. Come back. Alright. While he comes back, I'll take care of this guy. Got a little additional company I wasn't expecting. Now I really should have eaten a little bit of food here. It's not so much the morale, but the power. Oh, maybe sometime I'll be able to get my... Regeneration up at a nice level, but for the time being, I need to replenish it every once in a while with Dark Before Dawn in order to keep my power up. And I need to pay attention so that I can actually hit the right gambit. Now, it's a constant battle once you find a nice spot where they all come in. Because once you find a place where you can intercept them, as you can see so far, they have a habit of intercepting you instead. Which is nice for a warden, but isn't particularly nice when you're playing a squishier character. Now, let me get some food in here so I could regenerate. Do I get on time? Yes, I do. Oh, you missed me. <laughs> That's another level before I can use level 85 food. So I am still stuck with the old food. Alright, just need one more, and here he is. Yeah, 
and I spent this almost constantly in combat which isn't all that rare an event. Now, I've got both quests complete. Right? Oh, no, I don't have all quests complete. I do have one more to do. All right, that was number four. Now I'm done. And I don't feel like sticking around to fight more after that. Now, my usual way to get to the quest givers is to turn right after I pop back in. Will you aid the horse turn this horse? in. I get five tokens. Oh, wait a moment. Oh yes, I have a plug in. First, I gotta load the plug in. Since I didn't have the. Dailies before, I didn't have it loaded, so therefore I will note that Pine Leaf is my. Alright, so now I have Football Assistant loaded. And this has all the various items. I already did the Mead Hall, so I'll note that there. But all the rest of them are unbuilt yet. Therefore, it says I have 49 days left. You say, wait a minute. Didn't I say before that it takes 44 days? 49 is the base. But there are 5 Ds that you complete in doing all the dailies. When you do all the dailies for an area, you complete a deed. When you do all the dailies in all 4 areas, you complete another deed. Each of them gives 25 tokens, which is equivalent to a day. So therefore... If you finish all five of those deeds, it takes 44 days. What brings you to these lands? But the point is then, it keeps track of, this is how many tokens I need in order to rebuild everything. That's how many I currently have. Now here we have the hobby raid. horse. Now this is probably the easiest quest of all the Hootball dailies. And here we go, one hobby horse. Now the only tricky part is to find the course the first time you ever do it. Once you do it the first time, it's pretty easy after that. Now, I remember when I was first doing it, taking a few attempts in order to find the proper course. But every time you hit one of these light areas, and that took me forever to figure out that the light areas were marking the course. Every time you hit those, the clock resets to 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to hit the next checkpoint. And there's also an overall timer that you see at the bottom right. But I have never seen that as to be a significant issue. If you hit all the lights in time, then you will hit the finish line in time. Now there is another one in Cliving that has a similar mechanism. But that's going way out in the countryside and have a lot more trouble seeing the lights in that one. I never could quite memorize the course since it takes you from cliving, cliving into the wold, back into Norcrofts, and I get lost. But here, when you're within the town and mainly following streets, it's a lot harder to get lost, especially since you're going a little bit more, a bit, little bit slower than you are when you're on your war steed. And I am coming up to the finish line. Done. And we 
turn in Our mission is done. this one. Now the third one is just to kill some Easterling. I'm going to decline that one for now. It's similar to the one where you have to kill the... kill the goblins in the Sutcrofts that was shown to you by Spridra. The difference though is that while the goblins were greenies and you had to kill 16 of them, here the Easterlings are normals and you have to kill 10 of them. But other than that, it's a pretty similar one. Now the reason why I want to have two open is I'm going to come back to this quest and it's offered every day so I'll have no trouble getting it done when I need to get it done. But I might have a rare double come up at cliving that I might wind up skipping it today and then finding out that it doesn't come up for another 10 weeks or something like that. So therefore, what I wanted to leave with the row two spots open. Alright, so let us go to cliving, which is in the Norcross. Now while I have swift travel to all the various locations between the various towns, even after I get a stable in Hutbald, I will not have swift travel there. Swift travel requires ally in order to get it from Hutbald. Therefore, I'll most likely be using my port to go to the Sucross and use that as a central vector point. Now, here we are for the, let's see who gives what. Yes, he has two quests for me. There's always one who our has two quests, upon our one who has a landscape quest, and one who has an instance where you have to kill a certain number of enemies. The and you have to remember, really on the second the time you ask for a quest, to go to the second category instead of the current quest so that you get them. Now it looks like I'm going to be here with someone else if I saw that correctly. And I need to kill some bats. Hmm, he must have been sent to a different copy. But these are public instances so therefore it's easy to be sent for two people to be sent to the same area, you won't be here alone all the time, though sometimes you will be, of course. Here you have bats and draklings. And the draklings have this poison that nice, beautifully dissolves your armor. Similar to the ones you have in Moria. The other thing I need to do are collect these pays faces which have let's see something about tar in them or something like that which is why they call it pitched bat yeah they're pitched filled ba faces and second base is here I want to make sure that I don't fall over It's very easy to fall over to your death here, though here it looks like there's a nice soft landing area. Oh, there he is. Maybe he had a little slower loading screen, which isn't all that unusual. Okay, this one's a frost one.
because he gets that vase, so I will take this vase. go back to the other side. I could go down if I wanted to. Which is probably what I am going to have to do since these aren't back up yet. Though, that's a case of you snooze, you lose. Here's a fire one. Oh. I'm surprised that other warden didn't come down to take the base, but... She doesn't want it, I'll take it. Alright, that takes care of my vases. Oh. Now she comes down. <laughs> oh, it's a guard. E. Never mind. <laughs> Alright, now I need just two more. Just one more. Now I will just bring it over here. Because it's very easy to miss a jump and fall into the water. And falling into the water means you drown. And now that I'm through here, easiest way out is leave instance. I'm not in the mood to try to jump back up there. I've done the jumping act in this instance enough times to know how many ways you can get killed here. Will so I'll just turn them in. Our mission is dire. And now I'm done. Now I have to get back since that is five of them. So the quest disappears. Easiest way to get back to... Welcome, my friend. Hip bold. Of course, I can't go there yet because there's no stable there. So, therefore, I will go to the... Well, there's Snowborn. Of course, the easiest way... F I could swift travel there, but... Now, remember, I've got the muster skill, but if you don't have the muster skill or the hunter equivalent... You can always go there by the stable. Bring up my war steed, and I'm on the way. Now, eh, not the path I wanted to take. There are a couple of paths you could take in order to get to Hoodbold. And I want to see how many... Orcs I can avoid along the way. Now this is take a little longer than I would on most of my versions of Pine Leaf. 
This is my fourth version of pine leaf to start on this area. Make sure I got the right one. Yes. Two of them have medium steeds. One has a light steed. And this is the one that has the heavy steed. Now, personally, I prefer the medium. The grass is growing as I head towards it. <laughs> All right. And here I'm arriving. And welcome to Hoodfold. We will give you a nice, crispy welcome. Amazing I'm able to navigate this on a heavy. There we go. Now I can do some of these quests. Now there are other quests that are given in other sections as Phrydra showed you, but those require at least allies standing in order to do the first set and kindred for the rest. I'm currently friend with the various factions, actually only acquaintance with Zidkrofts, so therefore I cannot do any of those yet. Besides, I've got some important ones to do here. For example, the Mead Hall, Outdoor our Enhancement 1. Upon our strength. Will you aid us? And when I finish this, our mission is dire. I get a milestone, which I'm most definitely setting here, since the only other place where I might put one is suit crops, and I already have transportation to there. If you are a non-warden hunter and don't have a good way of getting to the suit crops, then you may just leave your leave your milestone there instead in order to help to get around on the dailies faster. That is depending on your preference. But of course we will need to rebuild Reverie the stable. Need of your and that costs fifteen tokens. What brings you to these lands? And now we got some nice beautiful stables, but more importantly well Stable Master! Well met, my friend. Who can take me to all sorts of fun areas? The swift travel is turned yellow right now because I need ally with the faction in question in order to use swift travel. Now I could get there if I wanted to spend a mithril coin but I don't feel like spending coins for that. Now, what do I have left? Let me bring up my assistant. Now I have five tokens left. And I finished outdoor enhancements. And I finished one part of the stable, since I've rebuilt the stable. So since I have one more area, I'll take care of outdoor enhancements our too. Depends upon our strength. Which I'll accept. Will you aid us? And our what magically appears dire. here is the mailbox. So therefore, I recommend these to be your first three items that you get. Outdoor enhancements one, outdoor enhancements two for your mailbox, for your milestone, and the stables in order to get your stable mass. And that concludes the first round of Hoodball Dailies. Things near the Meat Hall are starting to look a lot better, but there's a long way to go. In fact, 43 more days. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you through all 44 of them. This is Pine Leaf Needles. May your shield protect you, and your spear never break.